Three, two, one, and welcome back to Chasing the Racer. We have tonight as our co-host, we have Joe Ackroyd. How are we doing, son? I'm good, I'm good. Brown's actually a bloody long way from Harrogate, though. It is. Do you know where Harrogate is? Uh, no. Do you know where, <laughs> you know where Leeds I, I know where Aragon is. But... Aragon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nowhere near Northern that. Okay. Nowhere near yeah. that. I'm a northerner like you're a northerner. Okay, fantastic. Now... We've with Joe. We end up seem to do like the the continental lads on this side of things, and you've got a much better accent than me. Mate. So I'm going to let you introduce our guest for this night. Nicola Canapa. Is it Canapa or Canapa? Is Nicola first Nicola. of all? Yeah. That was, here we go. Can you say Canapa? Canapa. Nicola Canapa. Nicola Canapa. But <sighs> most of the people in Italy mm, said it wrong and say Canapa. So. I, I've I, always said Canapa, but then I did some uh, commentating for Eurosport and the guys were calling you Canepa. <laughs> and I was like, I'm sure it's Canapa. Canapa. Yeah, Canapa. Nicola Canapa. Good, but you, you can call me Nick, you can call me Canepa, you can call me how you want me. Can you say that one more time a little bit slower? That's quite arousing. I'm not going to lie. That's go on. <laughs> N- Nicola Canepa. Oh, nice. Very nice. I, t- I tell you what, I'm, I must give a pre warning as well. Okay. We all... the, the top racker was much more difficult to say. Nicola Canepa is. He didn't even bother. Yeah, okay. Mate, I'm not even going to bother with yours. I am taught. I can't even say my own name without changing shoe. Never mind anyone else's top rack. I couldn't even. Can you do it? No, top. no, I never did. In four years, I work with him. I just say call him Top Rack. I, the surname is doesn't exist for me. This is your chance. <laughs> This no, no way, no way, no way. Ras Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see, well, you he's can't good. Do it. This guy's good. <clears throat> you can't do it. Yeah, no, Ras <laughs> Gatlioglu. That's it's, much better than me. It's nearer than you. Guys. It's my first time though, so That's I can first... improve. Okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Absolutely fantastic. So we are here down at Brands Hatch for the final round, and um, I must give a fair warning on this one because we're a little bit time restrained because you're good lady is waiting for you in a hotel is that right <laughs> yes is that right i hope she she locked the door well <laughs> <laughs> but that, there goes my first question are you on a promise tonight if she's locking the door behind you jesus wet <laughs> no no i'm uh, i'm okay she's really patient so she knows she uh, is my 10th week in a row in a in a racetrack so she, she knows that uh, it's like that does she come to all of them does she go no, to all no, of them no, no 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 no, if not, she would kill herself or something. <laughs> Does she listen to podcasts? I hope not. <laughs> oh my! How long have you been married then? No, yeah, I'll not, put him right in the not, bad books. No, not married. Not married. Just, well, oh. Five years together. Yeah, five oh. years. Are you gonna, are you gonna put a ring on it? He's not an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> no, because I had a wedding before already, so I was. Yeah, we don't talk about uh, uh, motorbikes on this podcast. No, just I know. What's your biggest regret? It's like, a, it's like a, a really shit version of loose women. Yeah. <laughs> the motorbike edition of it. Yeah. Absolutely. Fun. So ten, your tenth weekend in a row. Yes, yes, yes. And which was the first of the tenth? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which was which was the first one of these? I don't remember anymore. It's it's just just was ten. Week ago, so. <laughs> so we you're here, here with the McCams lads on the Yamaha. So yes. is is this the your tenth week on a Yamaha, or have you been dipping in out of different brands? Is that how you say it? Manufacturers. No, manufacturers. No, yeah, I right. I am oh, yeah. Yamaha all the way because I'm racing in the okay. I'm the test rider in World Superbike. I'm racing in uh, EWC for for Yamaha as well. And uh, I'm doing the Italian Championship with Yama and now BSB with Yama. So everything is about Yama. And I'm the coach for the uh, four Yama riders in World Superbike as well. I feel like I maybe didn't, breathe. Do you, uh, <laughs> didn't do you justice in your introduction either there. Because that, that was a much better introduction of, <laughs> of your, your racing TV. But you're a world champion as well, aren't you? Yes, yes, fresh world champion. Fresh we world won champion. the championship, uh, the EWC championship in, uh, in the last racing ball door. Uh, couple of weeks ago three four weeks yeah. ago and i lost count right. and he nearly <laughs> forgot about yeah. winning a world championship yeah. he nearly forgot about that how long is it since yeah won a world championship wasn't it like 2004 or something yeah it was so it was so long ago it was ago. long long time ago and uh, my last title in wc was uh, in uh, 2017 with uh, gmt 94 team and then i moved to to yard but we had some really bad luck in the last few years we were we have always been really fast, but uh, a lot of bad luck. And then uh, finally this year the the first victory in the twenty four hours came and uh, good good races and uh, we won the title. This was nice. 
<laughs> did you uh <laughs> just if this was nice I'd, I'd be using a lot more expletives than just this is very nice you know <laughs> that is very nice <laughs> that was my italian accent well, by yeah, the way that was terrible french <laughs> it, i know yeah, yeah i know <laughs> we um we've, we've sort of jumped the beginning bit but just on this year i was at baldor as well and did you guys get caught out in that oil that was at the end of the back straight through the right hand. No, Do you remember we were, that? yeah, this was Fuck. unbelievable. Well, I was stood at the corner watching when it happened. Wow. And a Yamaha went down, went through the, the engine cases. Yes. And, oh, no, sorry, it had blown up at the end of the back straight. Mm -hmm. He tipped in, he'd gone down, gone through the cases, just dumped everywhere. Yeah. And then I think there were nine went down. Yeah, Su Cert. Suzuki, yes, Kawasaki, many others yeah. uh, went down. You and guys this, uh, weren't in that. You have to mention this is a, uh, there is a straight that is uh, the longest straight is uh, almost two kilometers. You, you tell me in miles. <laughs> it's very long. It's very like long. Thir 30, 30 seconds with, uh, in, in full gas. So it's very, very long. 30 seconds in full gas is a long time, for, especially for a 24 hours race. And then this corner is a uh, right, uh, right hand corner, very, very fast in uh, third or fourth gear. And uh, this guy blow up the engine is not in that corner, so everyone coming just Jesus, yes, it's yeah, fast. Yeah. Like the the you you get to the bridge, don't you? At the end of the back yes, straight, yes. you pop. That's your brake mark. You pop up, go back to you don't even really touch the brakes, do you? Mm. And then you're in. Yeah. And the, and there was oil all through there. Was this in the, the <clears throat> like the daytime or the night time? Is, is it a nighttime yeah. race at that point? Yes, yes, it's twenty four hours. Twenty four so, hour race, yeah. of course it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it was the second day wasn't it it was about yes. 10, 10 or 11 o'clock yeah it was daylight day. but after already 18 hours 18 of race hours, yeah. like something like that yeah. it was whoa. wait hey look, how many people got hit was it was there made like major injuries no no, 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 luckily, no everyone was sliding sliding but very high speed and <laughs> <But> luckily <laughs> everybody's bikes they got from yes, everybody yes. like none of the bikes can't wheel because poor Ricard, there's no like gravel traps so the runoff is just tarmac runoff painted so if you crash the bike doesn't dig in on the grass and then torpedo itself up in the air it generally slides doesn't yes, it yes slide yeah uh, so the only bike that couldn't recover from that crash was the guy that caused the crash because his engine had shit itself anyway mm. but everybody <laughs> yeah. that fell off on it picked the bike up and rode them back and the safety, no safety yeah. car was out they didn't lose yeah. a lot of time did they no 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 they didn't lose a lot of time yeah it was good it's kind of a really <laughs> unique thing about Paul Ricard as well. Is yes. the, there is no grass, is there? Yeah. So. But some, some corners is a problem because the run of fire is not that big. But that corner, the run of fire is like uh, three football fields. So it's like uh, you can slide forever and there's no problem. But some other corner, you slide, 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 and then the bike smash, like what happened to Ducati. Yeah. yeah. They slide in a, in a quite a slow corner, but the run of fire was small and uh, they completely smashed the bike on the... E the... Even the next right-hander after where the oil was, yeah. my teammate in 21 crashed there and he, he put the bike in the wall there. Because it's not that far away, it's no. fast into there, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, look at the draw. Look, look at the draw. <laughs> so, I feel like we need to go back to the beginning. Yeah, 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 yeah. Is, sorry, sorry. No, no, don't, don't you sorry. It's our job to control. It's mad because, like, you know, even in the introduction element, you just get sucked straight into the crack and you just want to talk about bikes. But it's a bit like people listen to this, want to know what was your backstory? You know, straight into motorcycles at what age and how did you get into it? Mate, it's uh, 25 years I'm racing. You want to listen all or just do a short version? You, like, <laughs> hold on, how old are you? You really look 25. Never mind, no, you've I'm, been riding I'm, 25. I'm 35, 35. And uh, Italian I started... Italian's age like wine, don't they? 1988. <laughs> Yeah, 88, yeah, yes. Yeah. I started really uh, like quite young with the mini bikes. Mm. And then uh, when I was quite big and tall already, and uh, I never went through the one to five or two stroke bike, and I went uh, straight to the 600 when I was 14 years old. So at 14 years old uh, and three days, I did my first race in the Italian Championship with the 600. But at the time, I was the first one. So it was a big, uh, big story in the news and the magazine because it was like. Uh, like my dad was crazy to put to put a kid on a, on a 600 bike, and also back in that period, the bikes were were quite bigger than now, heavier. And uh, was it like the steel frame 600s, the, yeah. the like the CBR 600s with yeah, the, yeah. the exhaust outside? Yeah, yeah. yeah, I, yeah, had yeah. This, I remember I my first bike was this Kawasaki 600, and the, it has the you know the fairing on the front and then some steel uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. the whole there is <laughs> yeah, just, yeah. just like uh, <laughs> really ugly so you was 14 <laughs> yes you fought, and yeah. that was the minimum age in Italy yeah it was license. the minimum age at the time right. to get the license so I immediately when I, I was starting when I was 13 with the 600 then at 14 I started and then I started my career with four strokes 
because at the time they said, okay, every, everything is going to be first rock soon. So better to, I was already quite big. So, okay, I started like that. And then after a couple of years, I went, uh, was everything really quickly for me at the beginning, I really easy, let's say, because I um, went to the stock 600 with, uh, with Ducati, I finished second in the championship. I was developing in the same time uh, the 1000cc bike Ducati. And uh, I was pretty fast. So the year after I won the stock 1000 uh, championship. So in the, at the first year, the first year with the bike and everything. And so I won also here in Brands Edge, the race. And it was the last time I came oh, here. Oh, the cuts out the bag, no excuses this weekend <laughs> for the McCams boys. <laughs> <laughs> that was and, U- European stock thou. Yes, to, yeah, it was clear. still a World, World Cup, was a World right, Cup. Right. And um, then after that, uh, I in that year I was developing the Superbike as well. So I was uh, racing with Stock 1000 and uh, doing the test rider for Ducati for the Superbike. And it was pretty fast. And uh, the year after, uh, I normally had to go to World Superbike because I had written in the contract that if I won the championship, I would have gone to Superbike with the factory team. But this didn't happen. And uh, they offered me to do the test rider in MotoGP. So I was 18 or 19 years old and I was already test rider for MotoGP for one year. So it was uh, quite crazy. And uh, who, who, were the, about, who were the Superbike boys? Uh, the it was Tri Bayliss and uh, Fabrizio. Right, yeah, 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 yeah. And, uh, yeah, it was, it was uh, quite easy. Everything, I was going on the bike and, you know, when everything is easy and I was doing track record in Mugello, I was doing some tests in, uh, in Italy and every time I was faster. So everything was, like, uh, quite easy for me. That's, it sounds like, you know how you, were go, you went down the, the sport bike route on the Honda 600s and everything on that regard? That's actually a bit of a shock for me here listening he went straight in the test part of MotoGP. Like, <laughs> you would think... Now, my illusion of Italy and Spain is that kids, are cut, like, their PE lessons are on mini motorbikes, you know, going out every weekend, and, like, the atmosphere is just so driven. Hmm. Like, motorbikes, motorbikes, motorbikes. It seemed like a very relaxed version of... Well, I didn't expect that, to be honest. <laughs> so that transition into being a test rider for MotoGP from really riding bags of shite (laughs) how much of a shock was that yeah was 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 like like the steps were huge and very quickly huge uh, that's a huge yeah like how how do you how did you go from because i feel like we jumped a bit there no that's him yeah (laughs) (laughs) you you went from being 14 to being a motor gp test rider how how did those conversations come about to be a test rider you've is to have quite a unique skill set, haven't you? You know, there's fast riders who are not necessarily good test riders because they can't relay the information of what the bike's doing, but they can just be naturally very fast. And yeah. then people like yourself need to be able to analyse every little corner of everything and, and be able to feed that back. So at what point did you realise in that time frame? But I think they realized because I was uh, I was uh, starting with the production bikes. Now the first time they put me on a production bike, they called me. You want to come to test this new one thousand cc bike? Okay, okay. Let's was go. that the eleven ninety eight? Yeah, the ten ninety eight. Yes. I say okay, perfect. No, and they start riding, and uh, I gave some good feedback, and uh, they they were pretty happy. So next test they make me try the super bike and they say and the feedback was good the lap time was the track record so i say okay maybe this guy is uh, yeah <laughs> and we were walking all the time in the right direction but it was really good for me to to start this process when i was so young because uh, i had the opportunity to work with the best engineers uh, with the uh, w- when you when you have a test team is not like uh, in a normal team that you have one crew chief uh, one uh, electronic engineer and yeah. something no you have maybe 10 engineers listening to you and uh, uh, m- maybe even more and uh, this is nice because you have uh, the opportunity to learn a lot from them and to th- they can explain you different things and when I was so young I was 17 18 and 19 I had the opportunity to work with them and learn so much from them and this happened to me a lot who did you have any guidance during these periods or was it just you turning up you know you got a job offer and you literally did this all yourself or who was 
mentor in you or did you have a mentor no i had no wow. one yeah and no one uh was my dad following me a bit but not every race and uh yeah i was uh, basically i was in the hands of the ducati management and uh <laughs> so there's a lot of, how does that is in quick like there's, yeah. there's a lot of 17 year olds that can't give <laughs> they can't even drive a bloody car can't can't give <laughs> feedback in that you know yeah. so a lot of 17 year olds you, you're working in the talent cup you'll have it where i bet you're <laughs> banging your head against the wall going well what's it doing well it's all good yeah, it's good <laughs> you know like 17 you yeah that. to be honest i don't know and i was lucky that i could work with them and that i could yeah. learn a lot too, since i was uh, really young and uh, i every time like I, I remember the first time i rode the moto gp there was the the test rider at the time that had the crash and he he broke something he he, he was injured and uh, I was testing the superbike and they asked me, okay, listen, we need to test some parts and we don't have the test ride. You want to jump on the bike? And I said, yes, of course. So this was my first experience of the MotoGP and it was, uh, was, was like, uh, like? Was, was, was crazy. The first time I was slower than the superbike. The first day was really? like uh, so different. The MotoGP was such, especially that bike, that Ducati that... at the time was so difficult to was ride. Was that the 1000 as well? It wasn't the 800, uh, was it? It, No, it was the 800. Was it the 800? Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. Were you disappointed? <laughs> Why? No, 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 no. Like, it's like for me, like, you know, like our race, heroes. a new race, meeting the hero situation, it's your opportunity to get on a MotoGP mm. bike and you think this is the best the world can offer. Yes. Were you disappointed initially? Or did it live up to your expectations? Yes. No, 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 no. I knew that the, the bike is so difficult, but, uh, you know, it's like... Uh, you, you you think that when you jump on a MotoGP bike you're gonna be much faster, no? Yeah, so well, say, and then and then you ride it and say, okay, <laughs> I have to re- re- relearn everything. Let's do a step back. Let's try to learn how is it. But the bike, especially the MotoGP, are were so difficult to ride. Now it looks like it's a long time that I don't ride the MotoGP anymore. But it looks like they are a bit easier to ride. What was what made it <laughs> so like so difficult? What was so different compared to the superbike is the stiffness. Right. was much 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 more stiff so the reaction of the bike were much more quicker and uh, difficult to to understand for me that i was coming from uh, pirelli coming from world superbike uh, and uh, from bikes that are really a production bike that are really soft and you can feel everything now yeah, yeah, yeah. you have a, a proper feedback from in the moto gp the reaction are so quick the bike is super stiff and that is uh, did you not get you don't get that feedback then you don't no. sit up and break and feel no, you, you, at, at some point you feel like uh, is more dangerous to do a warm up lap than than the race, you know, because you're not pushing and the bike is so was so unrideable. It was wow. so difficult to ride. Yeah. But what did your lap times get? So you're talking about your world superbike lap time. Yes. You know, we're talking about that test. Did you crack that time? Did it go yeah, faster? The, the, the second, the second day, yes. How but, much uh, by? Not, not much, like a second. Not, not That's too much. Really. Yeah. That's but, big in our game. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, the, at the time, also the lap time between the MotoGP and Superbike, they were quite close. So already was not a bad, uh, bad lap time on a on a GP bike. Yeah. Who was the rider that got? Who was the test rider at the time? Was it Pira? was uh, no? It was before? It was Vittoriano Guareschi was called it, uh, and uh, was uh, a test rider. Stayed uh, quite a long time. Then when it came uh, Battaini, and then yeah. it was Piero after. Right. Yeah. Piero still a test rider now. Yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. Yeah, he got injured last week in the Italian Championship, but yeah. So, uh, yeah, well, yeah. No, <laughs> it was a getting... big accident there. That was not involved in that. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, what year was this when you were a test rider in MotoGP? Uh, 2008. 2008. So, like, let's talk about that lap time that you did on day two. Where do you think you would have fared riding that bike? What, in what? a race like where would you have finished in that race uh, i i don't know what what i he know knows. It, no it was 2007 <laughs> the test in 2008 when i was the proper test rider mm-hmm. that, that this i don't remember the 2007 the first time i rode but uh, i remember the other times because we was really actually really interesting because we were going uh, uh on the two weeks before the race event on the track, like for example, there was a race in Indianapolis. We were going two weeks before in Indianapolis. A race in Mugello, two weeks before in Mugello, because it was a test rider for tires. So with Bridgestone, I was testing all the tires, and I choose basically choose the tires for Casey and Melandri that uh, then they they had to race two weeks after. And this was nice because physically I was destroyed because I had to do like three four race simulation per day, wow. and on on a GP bike so physical was I was and physically I was not that strong so it was uh, Bald- it was Baldo really twenty four hours easy yeah yeah, yeah <laughs> but much worse much worse yeah. three or four race simulation with a GP bike in oh. a day is worse than a twenty four hours I can tell you that yeah, yeah. and, uh, and uh, you, because your pace as well you can't you will have had to have 
you have to push. You have to do. Your and choice. also, I was thinking, okay, it's my opportunity to go to MotoGP the next year. So I say, uh, and the, and the, I can have the direct comparison with the lap time that they are gonna do in two weeks in the race weekend because you know the weather condition they are mm. pretty much the same, the temperature yeah. pretty much the same, the bike is same, tires are same. So okay, it's my opportunity to to show that I can be fast. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so I was pushing in every race simulation. I was crashing a lot as well, but uh, it's like... Uh, Were they, did they have a problem? Sorry. No, no, Karen, no, no. Go, go. Were they all right with you crashing or did yeah. that cost Yeah, problems? yeah, they wanted me to push. So yeah, it was, uh, yes, yeah. we had, it was not like uh, a testing, like uh, probably I'm doing now that I'm testing parts. You have to push, but you can have, you, you must have some margin to don't smash a bike yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, every yeah. session. But at the time, they wanted me to push because they wanted really to get the best out of the uh, out of the feedback. They wanted the best feedback from the tires, and uh, you know, in the tires, if you want to do the race distance, uh, if you keep half a second in the pocket uh, at the end of the race, maybe the tires feels perfect. But yeah. uh, if then somebody else ride it and go half a second faster every lap, uh, the uh, results yeah, completely, completely different. Completely different. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's every dream, like every dream job for every motorcycle. Yes. Like an engineer goes, I needed a crash. <laughs> not really no, 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 you know, like, I don't I, think I, they like, were happy no, about no, 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 they wouldn't have been, but in the same breath, it's like, we really needed to try but, that much harder. But I have a okay. funny story. I have a funny story about that. The, the very first time I tried the MotoGP was uh, like a strange bike because uh, they built this bike that uh, they wanted to save fuel. So basically the, the bike that you go at the end of the straight, uh, full gas, ah, like this was 20,000 RPM, and then you brake and the bike mm. shut off. So you arrive, and then you backshift, pam, 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 but you don't hear anything. Then you enter into the corner and you release the brake and then suddenly bah, the bike starts again. Oh, and this is something that never come to race. And uh, they were testing that. And uh, the test rider crashed. I think he crashed the, I'm not because surprised. of that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but it was the most awkward bike I've ever tried because it was like, uh, you arrive, imagine at the end of the straight of Mugello, 340k per hour. I don't know how, how many miles there are, but so very, very fast. 200 mile an hour, yeah. You, t- you break and silence. That's like, <laughs> that's like hitting a, a, a purpose false neutral. Yes. You know when we've all hit them? And does it have engine braking at that point or not? Yeah, it does some engine brake, but the, the problem that the clutch was uh, stuck, like we had only five millimeter of clutch uh, usage. And so this, this uh, engineer asked me, okay, we have to, to do some tests. We have to see if the riders go straight in the gravel, if they are able to go out with just five millimeters of, uh, of clutch. Well, after being so, in the gravel. So the, yeah, the second day was like, okay, at the first corner, at the end of the straight, go on the gravel. I go on the gravel, the bike, boom, stop. Okay, then wait for the, push the bike out of the gravel, wait for the truck to bring you back to the garage. Okay, one time, then try again. Second time, <laughs> that was like a, a nightmare, mate. And not, I, I didn't get out of the gravel, never, so. What did you have to do? Miss your braking mark? <laughs> yes, and go straight in the gravel. That's cool. <laughs> yes, with a GP bike, you know. At the end of the, end of the straight in <laughs> Yes, yes. <laughs> Over 200 mile an hour, just break a bit like This that. was the worst, uh, worst test I did in my life, That's was horrendous. a disaster. But like, was race control aware that you were going to purposely yes, ride? Yes, 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 yes. You, you'll have the exclusive. Yeah, we, I was just alone on so Mugello. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what, what, and that was to save fuel. That was a, a, a Yeah, the, the goal was to, sa- was, uh, was to save fuel. But then at the end, we didn't use the system because for the rider, it was too weird to ride with the, the engine that yeah, was yeah, off. Yeah. And uh, yeah. And it, was it controlled through the brake or through lean angle? I don't know. When, when it came back in again. I I think it was through brake. Yeah, it was that connected sounds, to the brake. Yes. That sounds horrible. But, yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And also the transition between the engine off and on was not that smooth still. So it was, was not amazing to, yeah, to yeah. ride. That's why they didn't use it at the end in the, in the races. Because <laughs> it was a shit idea. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How many years like were you MotoGP testing it? I did only one year because the year after, what, what I told you that I was doing the race simulation and that was two weeks before. Mm-hmm. And um, that year was pretty fast because uh, apart from Stoner, that was on another planet and was incredibly fast. Uh, the other Ducati rider, I was uh, most of the time faster than them. So it was, uh, they said, okay, we signed your contract for Pramac and I went to Pramac the following year. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it was nice. That, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. That's nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Difficult year or okay year or big learning year? Yeah, it was a very difficult year. Very, very tough, especially because they came out with a new bike, all made from carbon fiber. It was yeah. the first uh, 
when I was testing, I still had the um, the normal chassis, the the tubes. I don't know how to say in English. The, the yeah, you had, yeah, you had a the co- classic like a conventional yeah chassis. Yeah, chassis yeah. And then the um, the year after, they introduced this uh, carbon fiber chassis, just the with the with the engine and the, this little was the chassis was like this long. Yeah, it was yeah. like uh, small and the carbon fiber swing arm. So it was a very very difficult bike to ride. And uh, was, I didn't know. It was man- too stiff, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Too stiff, and uh, there was Nicky Aiden as well. Yeah. Right, uh, racing was uh, Casey, Nicky Aiden, uh, uh, me, and uh, Callio, and uh, was a very difficult bike. And also, I, w- I was really young and may- maybe not ready for MotoGP for a do a full season. Uh, I didn't know eight tracks, uh, so it was uh, it was tough. But uh, it was a big learning season for me as well because I had the opportunity to, I mean. Three years ago, three years before, four years ago, I was just watching these guys on TV, and then uh, suddenly I'm I'm with them racing in MotoGP. I remember, okay, I was in the starting grid in Qatar for the first race, and uh, at the time we were not many racing in GP. We were like 18 or 19, but Jesus. everyone was uh, at least one time world champion. The, the, let's say the slowest, the one that was struggling the most was uh, uh, some races was James Toseland, who was already two times world champion in World Superbike, yeah. uh, riding a Yamaha, and it was, okay. <laughs> and I remember my first race, I was fighting with him uh, all race, then he beat me at the end, but I was fighting with him every, all race uh, for the last place. And I said, okay, <laughs> I, I'm last, but I'm fighting with this guy that is uh, two Double times world champion. Yeah, <laughs> so, okay. Yeah. What age were you there? I was 19. 19. 19 year old. Yeah. It's a fair step. And that, that all happens quite quickly. So everything it? Yeah. went like this, and yeah, then yeah. Uh, as fast as I get there, as fast as I went down, because it was was. Uh, so I don't was, know if it was down. It was more in a different direction. Wasn't yeah, it? yeah, it was, very different yeah. direction. Yeah. Yes. So a quick recap: 14, you first got a 600. Yeah, that's right. 14, yeah. 19, MotoGP. Yes. That, that, has that, be bit, some that has to be a record. Yeah, yeah, maybe that has yes. to be a record. Yeah, I don't yes. think there'll be anybody else that's mm-hmm. done that's held a, a, a competition license for so few years well, and the, finds themselves yes. in Grand Prix. Uh, yeah. well, I took I tours in with CB 500s, but then that was a more of a gradual British and then world. Like, but going from <laughs> like a stock steel <laughs> frames Honda with like, the, the, the yeah, yeah. <laughs> his exact words were ugly bike. Yes. <laughs> That is incredible, yeah. and you've done it kind of backwards, if you know what I mean. You yeah, haven't you yeah. haven't gone from like nice bike, gone up, and then yes. that you've gone from crap bike, test rider, and then yeah. into Grand Prix. Holy crap! Do you do you wish you'd ever had a go at the or, or done the two stroke thing? Or were you not? Did you? Because yeah, I, I what, love uh, two strokes. What I can tell you when uh, you come this way, so from the production bike to the MotoGP, the the shock is much bigger because yeah. uh, the, the, you're used to ride the Impirelli first of all that are really soft and really nice feedback into very very stiff tires, and the bike is a lot more stiff. So if you come from one to five or now Moto three, Moto two, and arrive in MotoGP, they're all prototypes bike, and yeah. the reaction are are much more similar. So they are all stiff. Also Moto three is super stiff bike, but if you, instead of a Moto three you ride a Super Sport three hundred. Is uh, the, the, we can do the comparison. One one is super stiff, is a proper race bike, is a prototype. The other one is a production bike adapted to the race, but yeah. with soft reaction and the soft uh, soft tires. So is uh, is difficult and is much more difficult when you go the other way around. If you grow up having this kind of feedback from the bike with stiff bikes, you keep going and it's fine. But if you have to change suddenly after three four years, it's, it's much more difficult. Because we've had like we've had a lot of conversations between between ourselves, uh, you know, as, as the lads that. that to do the hosting of this and we were talking about why why the UK doesn't necessarily breed particularly good Grand Prix riders or we don't pr- we don't produce as many good Grand Prix races as we do S- World Super Sport exactly. and yeah. Superbike and it's generally yeah I think exactly it's because of thing, that you know, reason we yeah. spend a long time on production bikes here sure. and really our the, the, you know mm. well, you've seen BSB now yes. it doesn't really cater for that prototype yeah and when you see in Spain instead they start already with this kind of bikes and they start with Moto3 and uh, pre-Moto3 big Moto2 class out there as well yeah they? big yeah. Moto2 class and uh, so they, they kind of grow up with this kind of bikes <clears> and this is uh, this is a different way of uh, of growing up but uh, there, there has been some many good riders also that did my way that succeed like Ben Spies or Cal Cracklo there, yeah. there are many that did uh, very very well coming from the production bikes so yeah. Yeah, yeah. they had more talent than me for sure so it's, uh, it's not that's hard to believe like I'm not being funny that is hard to believe yeah no um, you know no, I'm, not, I'm not being I'm not being like you know think like the uh, billion, 8 billion people live on the planet <laughs> and you think that that talent pool is extremely narrow and like 
when you're listening to this short part of your story, we haven't even got into the like the, the rest of it. <laughs> that door, that is incredible. That yeah. is absolutely incredible. But I'll tell you what, before we leave the MotoGP element totally, you did briefly touch on it saying the bikes would be easier to ride now. Yeah. Let's talk about that a bit. Like how would you fare on a, a modern like a today's date MotoGP bike? I believe that now they are a bit easier. Right. So the um, I see also the gap that there was at the time between uh, there was Argo Lorenzo, Pedrosa, uh, Valentino, the, there was Casey Stoner, and uh, the gap between the first and the last was quite big. Mm. And uh, now you see the gap from the first to last is is very very small. So for sure it's very competitive. Is but. Uh, uh, looks like the bike and the tires as well allows the all the riders to arrive at a certain level quite quickly. Before it was not like that. It was there was just these uh, aliens, uh, let's say yeah. Valentino, Pedrosa, Orge, Casey, that uh, they could do something really, really special with that bike, and the others that were struggling. No, and uh, if we go to Saxony or Mugello or Misano, they were all the time there in front. And uh, if you remember. Now, every race, uh, if you are a little bit better than somebody else, if you find the setting a little bit faster, then you can you can win. The race after, you can be 10th or 15th, you know? And uh, Do you think that's a credit to the manufacturers that are all stepping their game up? Or do you give the credit there to the FIM for writing a rule book that makes mm. it more level? I think uh, it's more the manufacturer that uh, they step by step also with the aerodynamics and everything that makes the bike uh, a little bit more similar one to another, let's yeah. say, and uh, and a little bit easier to ride for the for the riders. Do you reckon Honda will get back to winning ways? Because now that Mark has, let's talk about like we don't get, <laughs> hey, let, we don't get a MotoGP rider on every day, do we? Let's face it. But like, do you reckon Mark has, like do you reckon Honda? Are gonna get back up there again? Yeah, sooner or later, for sure. But yeah, well, not, not in a short that, term. Are you are you a gambling man? Are you a <laughs> not really. Man? Not <laughs> really. I just lose money when <laughs> I gamble. <laughs> but, so. Fantastic. <laughs> no, but you know, it's inter- It's amazing. Like when you think Yamaha was dominant yeah. for years, and then Honda stepped up. It's just it's always been, in my opinion. But then you perfect example is Casey Stoner with the Ducati. Mm-hmm. But then no one's been trying to rep. When did Casey retire? Oh, there's yeah, a pub quiz question. Well, thirteen. Yeah, Ish. maybe yes. 12, yes, 13. 12, 12, yeah, something like that. Yeah. yeah. And then it's only, what, last year or the year before, Ducati were but, like, Bassanini. When, that's but that, am I saying that right, Bassanini? No. Bastianini. Bastianini, yeah. Thank you very much. There you go. But no, but now he's becoming the dominant foot. Speaking of which, is he comfortably leading the championship or? I don't even know where the championship is at now, to be honest with you. Bagnaia, you mean? Bagnaia, thank Bagnaya. you. Sorry, ba- <laughs> hey, look, I'm getting a big in there. there. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> yeah, is uh, yeah, is uh, up and down. It's circles at the end because it's some moment Yama is the strongest, and then now he's struggling, you know. But I'm pretty sure that Yama will come back up, and like mm. same as Honda, and uh, needs to find the um, good people, and uh, y- you have to have a good test rider. You have to have a, a good in, in engineers that build the engine, the chassis, the suspension. There's so many things that you can change on a bike mm. that is uh, unlimited. So, that... Sometimes when they change the rules and it almost makes all the manufacturers have to completely rethink everything, that's the opportunity, isn't it? When yeah. Honda, will, that that might be the thing. Mm. A couple exactly. of years down the line, exactly. they'll, they'll say, okay, now Aero's got to go. So is this, the, the, the squat thing. We're going to take, we're going to come back a little bit, make it a little bit more affordable then all of a sudden everyone's got to fucking oh god what do we do yeah yeah. yeah. that might be the opportunity where honda go okay well yeah, yeah, exactly now- this is a good point i think when when the rules will change something that there is a opportunity of uh, mix the yeah, yeah. Uh, mm. mix the values yeah marquez has moved to jacati now that honda have lost you know like that would you class marquez as one of those aliens you know what you were talking yeah. about it's yeah, I think so. Yeah, it's one of those aliens. Yeah. There we are. So yeah. uh, him on a Ducati, everyone's saying we'll never see him again. Do you like? Do you agree with that? Will he just win the championships? I think he's going to be really, really fast for sure. Yeah. yeah. He's going to be really fast because, you know, he he rides with the Ducati on track. So he see what mm. the other bikes can do. And normally a guy now, he has a lot of experience. Uh, he can see that for sure if he rides that bike, he can be winning. Why, why, why would... Uh, refuse such a big contract he would stop such a big contract so many years with Honda to to move to a team probably getting zero money just uh, to uh, let's say is the third Ducati team or the fourth Ducati yeah. team and uh, there's potential that he might not be getting paid 
Yeah, I think really? so. Yeah, it's possible. Yeah, he has well, his sponsors was... and everything. But for sure, the contract that he had, the, the proposal that he had from Honda was well, huge. Would be compared... massive, yeah, of course. Yeah, it would... But yeah. that, that's, a, that's, that's a shot. Yeah, again, oh, obviously, yeah. he's got his sponsors that would, you know, he'd be getting money from on a personal level. But was there never really thought that he that's... was going to buy Grassini? I heard that. At one he... point, that was the the conversation yeah, yeah, that I'd yeah. heard was he was going to buy the Grassini yeah, team. Somebody and, said that, and, yeah. And, yeah. But sometimes as well, you'll know as a rider, you just got to be in the right space to yeah. enjoy your riding to be fast again. Exactly. And he's not happy where he is. His head's the, gone. He's he's not enjoying himself. The motivation is so important when you yeah. have the right motivation and uh, probably he arrived at the moment that uh, he couldn't improve. He didn't see any improvement. He injured himself so many times. He crashed so many times that he yeah. said, "Okay, now I want something different." And mm. I understand him as a, as a sportsman. I understand him not only a rider as a sportman in general yeah. sometimes you need uh, to perform at your best you need new challenges you need uh, yeah. I was watching last night uh, Senna movie and yes, I was thinking yes. about that about uh, also the what, what you said about when the rules change also the the the, the fast the, who is the best uh, and maybe the next year it will be will be last because they, they didn't adapt so quickly to the new rules Formula 1 is the prime example of that isn't it I mean I, we, we don't talk four wheels in here that's like uh, sorry uh, but I went off topic <laughs> for, for, <laughs> but, but Senna that is, is a prime, Senna prime, <laughs> prime, yeah not, not, not about Senna but yeah but the Formula 1 is a prime example when they change the rules it just it just makes up things yeah, massively doesn't exactly. it and I think you know it can do that in bikes yeah. as well but your Marquez point as well he isn't a young man anymore is he no we always think of Marquez as being the little yeah, the kid, the yeah. little kid yeah. that was just you know the magical lad but he's getting on mm. and your body starts to feel it, it doesn't it I bet you, you nurse a few injuries don't yeah, you, yeah, you know, yeah you, absolutely. The, every day you deal with him, don't well, you? Like that's mad to say that, though, isn't it? But when you think about Marquez, how old? Twenty nine? Where's he? Twenty now? No, he's not. Yeah, 30, I think so. Yeah. 30, 31, something like that. Yeah. That's mad. And you think that when you think about short circuit, well, you know, MotoGP, it's an extensive version of short circuit racing. But you think it's you're saying that's all. That it's incredible, isn't it? It yeah. is incredible. Yeah. But let's let's go back to the ninety, the nineteen year old of you. <laughs> you know, your like your motivations at time. You know, you're making. Were you making money? At this yeah, point. yeah, yeah, yeah. Fant- you don't have to say smile. it. <laughs> you don't have to tip in and say it. Figures we don't no, no, no. Let me just say, what was your tax code? Yeah, they're, they're, they're all gone anyway. So. <laughs> Did you enjoy it at the moment? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, but like, the, let's say I didn't have a mentor. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, this that, is, that, that's yeah. interesting. That's a big thing, that though. Isn't yeah, it? yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's very a, important. That is a big this gap is, in the market yes. where there should be. I might do something there. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. There wants to be a business there for exactly that because mm. I bet. Your money just. Yeah, it was not. The, it's always good to have somebody that follows you at uh, 360 degrees. Now you see the riders. Uh, th- this has changed completely now because you see that uh, in everything there is a coach, uh, mm. and uh, the riders n- don't. Before they used to come alone to the racetrack. Now they have uh, every time somebody that follow them, help them, or the manager, or you know, yeah. th- there is many people around the uh, one rider, and there is like a crew, yeah. just for the rider. And before it was not like that. It was was they were more like uh, we were more like alone, you know. And uh, are you you were the last of the fun breed. Mm-hmm. You were the last of the fun yes, breed. You know yes, I mean? yes, so, exactly. I, I, I tell you what, we, I've got to ask. What is the stupidest thing you bought? Ah, uh, this is this is <laughs> tough. <laughs> yeah, it's easy to spend a lot of money in cars and uh, stuff, stuff like this, sports car, and uh, yeah. But why not? You Just to like... impress the girls and. <laughs> And marry her, give a half, get divorced. <laughs> yes, yes. Nice. No, this yeah. was later when I was supposed to be w- wiser, but I wasn't. So, so at 19, mm. your first year MotoGP, you know, how long did the MotoGP journey last? Yeah, it was just uh, normally I I didn't get along so much with the team and uh, it was just one year. I got an injury as well. I didn't mm. do the last races. It was, uh, was a bit complicated, but... Uh, I really enjoyed and then uh, they after you know when you're racing MotoGP they are after you, you you can choose pretty much what you want because also I did some results in the top 10 I was not completely disaster so it was uh, I was improving during the season and uh, so let's say okay when there was 2010 first year of Moto2 first ever year of Moto2 so was a big question mark about which bike was going to be fast, which bike, uh, because we had no experience about that. It was the first, first ever year. So I say, okay, I have many opportunities. I signed with the team that uh, won the 2009 World Champion in 250. So it's yeah. the best team, you yeah. know. I say, okay, probably will be the best team. And I um, had many offers. And say, okay, I, I, I will take less money, but I want to go to this team because it's the best. But uh, didn't end up well because no. after five or six races, the 
the boss uh, flew to Brazil or something, closed the team, dance with everyone oh, was yeah. like a nightmare. Yes, yeah, so, so at Alpha season, I was... Uh, was there an opportunity yeah. to stay in MotoGP? And no, I had an opportunity like a couple of years after to come back, but uh, when they introduced the CRT bike, you remember? Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah, so, yeah, but yeah. Uh, I never went back. Then at the end, I, I wanted more, have a more stable, uh, uh, stable life. And then not gamble everything again to go to GP and maybe not perform well with a CRT. Again, was a big question mark which CRT was going to be fast, yeah, which not. Yeah. So it was, uh, it was a bit, uh, bit strange. But the Moto2 didn't end uh, well, unfortunately, because uh, it was, uh, I remember, Italian Grand Prix, so the most important race for, for, for me, you know, yeah, yeah, for yeah. the team that was Italian as well. And um, we're having the qualifying practice and like 10 minutes before the session, I was sitting there with my teammate and there was nobody else in the, in the garage. No one. The garage was empty. And then I say, okay, maybe the guys are coming. We look out and not, no, no one is was there. And uh, five minutes, four minutes, three minutes, and then I say, okay, no one is coming. So we took out the tire warmers along the, the stands and we did the qualifying practice in the Italian GP, like just, just alone. Just yes. you and your teammate? <laughs> yes. That was it? No, yeah, that was it. Because at the end, uh, was, uh, at, at the end I understand them, but was the mechanics were in, uh, let's say, in strike because they didn't get paid for, for the year before. So they were they were just uh, doing strike to to try to get the money from the owner of the team, you know. Did you start each it's, other's bikes and then help it, each other with paddock yes, stands? Like yes. Track there? And then when we came, we did our laps, and then no one, of course, was changing our rear tire. So at the end, when I came back, I just put the bike on the wall and, and left. And this, that was it. That was my wow. qualifying practice. In, in we wow. put like we put this on YouTube, but for the audio listeners, he's smiling now. But I bet <laughs> no, no, at the time, no, I no, bet you were not no, smiling. No, 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 no. But it's like another life for me. It was so long ago that is for me. It's funny now, you know, to think about all these stories and the, they they kind of uh, these bad moments at the at the end are the moments that uh, make you grow and make you understand and make you do better choices in the future yeah like the wedding you know do you know when you you know when you left I just want to ask about the wedding. Never mind. But after what after Moto Two, like, was she worth it? <laughs> just have to edit all this out. Though, no, no, I? we're keeping this in. <laughs> Do you know when you left uh, left MotoGP to go to Moto Two? <sighs> was that the end of you and Ducati? Uh, no, because at the uh, yeah, in that moment we we were not agreeing on many things, and we decided to split up. I could have probably stayed like uh, Piero to do the test rider for yeah. ages, yeah. but I wanted to race. I was still young, and uh, I said I don't want to be a test rider. Also, when in two thousand and eight they told me to do the test rider, you know, you win the championship, you you're you're fast, you want to race, you're eighteen, and what you do, you do a test rider, you don't do a single race in all year. No, it yeah. was not not is is weird. No, it's not uh, mm. not you what you expect. It's it's a thankless task as well, isn't it? Mm. You you never you do all that development work, you put all that time and yeah. effort in, and nobody ever knows or thanks you for for anything. Yeah, but this because this the people for me, that are benefiting from it. Yeah, this for me was fine, but I just felt like the ten ninety eight was my bike because I built it mm. and I I I really done like uh, I liked it and yeah. it was so easy for me to do lap times with it. So I'm pretty sure that if I was Going instead of test riding MotoGP on Superbike that year, I could have been. I could probably my career would have stayed in Superbike in factory teams for years, you know. But uh, is uh, has been like this. But it's been nice to have all this kind of opportunity, all this kind of championship categories and everything. Because uh, now I know that uh, if I jump on a on a Superbike or a mo um, like BSB or a, a Italian Championship, I can swap bikes, tires and everything and I can give a feedback that is probably a correct feedback to improve the bike and to 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 go faster. And this, uh, I accepted it and I and I like also this kind of job. So it's nice. What When did you start with Yamaha then? Uh, Yamaha, I started with, um, uh, with them in 2016. At the end of the Moto2? Uh, no, it was then Moto2, then I came back to Superbike. I did some years in Superbike, uh, some years in stock, but all the time with private teams and most of the time with Ducati. And uh, some good results, some 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 nice races, some nice qualifying. It uh, was uh, up and down, some mm. injuries as well. And then uh, in 2016, I had the offer to go to Endurance with Yamaha. And uh, I say, okay, when you are in the private team, I'd also, I was also I had bad luck, I think, uh, many years in the in Superbike. Uh, 
I was not getting paid because the team closed or because the team boss was at depth some, somehow with some yeah, people yeah. and so so like in Moto2 so it was so difficult and at the end I said okay I'm, I'm on my own I have to I, I think I'm uh, a good rider I think I can make money from this and uh, at some point I said okay is my job or I do something else yeah. and I believe that this could have been my job and I said okay but I needed to race for a for a, for a brand, for a manufacturer, because I cannot keep racing with uh, this uh, bad private team that they don't pay you, they don't pay the mechanics, and it's all the time struggle to get the money, to get the expenses that you pay and everything. So, okay, you know what? Uh, I, I, I want a contract with Yama, and uh, I, I know that, uh, and this was the best choice of my life, because uh, at the end I win two titles, two titles in uh, EWC, I enjoy so much, uh, I met so many nice people, and uh, I feel like uh, I'm really part of the Yama family, and this for me is the best, uh, the best part. So if you don't mind me asking, how did you go about looking for a manufacturer? You know, how did the, how did the Yamaha was well, already a couple work? of years that uh, they were calling me to do World Endurance and uh, I refused for two years. And then I said, OK, now I want to go there. And they say, OK, maybe it could be a, a step back is a step back from Superbike. Let's say it's a different championship. And uh, OK, Superbike is more famous and everything. But I don't care. I want to have the opportunity to have, first of all, a bike that I, I could win with. And uh, and second, uh, stability in my life. I, I, I don't want to chase mm. the people to get my money and something. So I said, okay, I want to race with a, with a bike that uh, uh, and with a team that give me the opportunity to win a race and to win a championship. And this happened because we win so many races with GMT 94. We win the championship. I finished two times second. It <laughs> was, uh, was really, really nice. And I start uh, again enjoying riding the, yeah. the motorcycle because uh, I was not thinking... Uh, if uh, to solve the problem with the others. Now, I was just thinking to ride and to enjoy and to have fun. And this is the best way at the end to go fast. Because if you have your your mind is free and you enjoy riding, the lap time can much, much, much easier. You need to explain to people listening just how different EWC is to other championships. Yes, yes, yes. Because yes. I bang on about it <laughs> and I just sound like, I'm, you know, I'm making up the numbers basically. You're at the front, but I know that you and people like Gintoli and uh, uh, Demelio, all you guys that are world class Grand Prix riders, you all have exactly the same love and passion and feeling for EWC that I do, making up the numbers. But you need you need to explain what it is about it. Because well, I was uh, it's something that oh you love or you hate. I I know some yeah. rider that came and did it twenty four hours and say never again. So <laughs> it's, yes, <laughs> I say forget about it. <laughs> I will do something else. For me, it was like in, in, instant love. No, it was uh, it was amazing. I remember I I didn't know when they called me for two years. The third year I accepted. I didn't know anything about endurance. I never watched a race before. I didn't know who was the best team, who was winning. I didn't know nothing, absolutely nothing. And I say okay. Let's try I should see some YouTube videos, no? And I look, I remember. <laughs> I, I, I remember. I remember this. Uh, my, this uh, was David Cheka. Uh, yeah. That uh, he, after like uh, 24 hours, I see that uh, they had to help him to get off the bike, no? Like he couldn't walk anymore. I say, wow. This is gonna be tough. I went to my personal trainer and I said, "Look, look at that. <laughs> After 24 hours, this guy is destroyed. This is completely fucked. I, we need to train a lot." So I spent all winter like training, 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 training. Then I came to the first test in uh, in uh, in March, and uh, I see. Ah, I speak with David and try to to understand. Uh, and he said, yes, last year I had a broken leg and I did it 24 <laughs> hours. So that's why they were helping him to get off the bike, you know. It was, he was not like destroyed or too, too tired from the 24 hours. He just had a broken leg. Fucking you, yes. <laughs> I knew I should have read the bit underneath. <laughs> yes. <laughs> when, when did you tell your personal trainer that he had a broken leg or did you? Yeah, at the end, I was happy because I said, okay, for sure I'm the fittest man here because... <laughs> <laughs> no one trained more than me in, the, in this winter. So. Oh, yeah. That's brilliant. brilliant. How serious do you take your training now yeah. compared to that? Yeah, then I'm much more relaxed now. I, I train <laughs> half than, than, than before. But. That's fantastic. Yeah. Did I see that you had... Um, you had Marvin with you at yes. didn't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Which My I thought was came. nice. Yeah, yeah, sorry, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, was... I, I always as well talk about the fact that I think for me in, in EWC, that bond between you and your teammates is such an important thing. Yeah. You've got to be all yeah. 
like mates and pulling together if there's one selfish bastard in there it doesn't work yeah no exactly this is the point and this is uh, amazing because uh, you know the the you have to understand that uh, you come from uh, normal racing where the teammate is your first enemy yeah you have to beat him because you know that you have the same package and of course you have uh, if he's faster than you means that uh, he has better skills not a better bike there is no excuses Mm -hmm. and uh, there you have to help him because you have two teammates and if if one of them is going slow you have to help him to go faster because uh, it it will uh, affect your race as well and then also another important aspect is that you have to understand that uh, if you do a mistake you're gonna and and the crash you're gonna destroy the race not only of yourself but uh, also of the other two teammates and uh, also another important aspect is that if somebody else is crashing your teammate is crashing and is destroying your race you have to accept it because mm. next time can happen to yourself and it can happen to him again or something so is a, is a different uh, mentality but is uh, is really really nice because at the end of a 24 hours especially when you win you, you feel like you did something special no? and the bond that you create with uh, not only with your teammates but also with the team because yeah. uh, the team is the active part in the race because during the pit stop they change the tires uh, they have to repair the bike if there is a problem so it's not like in the speed racing normal that uh, when you start the race you're on your own mm. there so many people are involved uh, to to achieve the result and uh, so you really feel this vibe this uh, this connection between the people to work together for such a long time because 24 hours is a long time yeah yeah is nice. He's a... We so when you're doing world uh, world endurance, were you doing any other foot like racing? Like were you doing short circuits as well between this, or was it fully committed to sole world endurance? Yeah, just uh, just world endurance. Right. Yes, and then uh, I I kept doing all the time the let's say the test rider. And uh, I am now I'm racing in this BSB and doing Italian championship and doing other stuff because I feel like it's very important for a rider not only to do endurance, but also to do some speed races. Also because it's uh, uh, only four races in world endurance and mm. it's not enough to do four races in one year. That was that yeah. was going to be my, like when we like get this conversation transition into BSB. That was my when I when the news got announced, it was like world endurance. Now, me never doing one before, you're thinking this is a total different style of racing. And it's you've already answered that question that you've done bits between, but yeah. how much difference is it? You know, you're going from what, what's a BSB race around here? 20 laps? 20 laps, yeah. 20 laps to 24 hours. Yes. <laughs> well, let's say is uh, the, the, the 20 laps is much more intense. You have to start, you have the, you, you cannot do a small mistake, especially in BSB where the level, so many riders are fast. So is uh, if you, I was, uh, my girlfriend was the first time here and she saw that in, uh, in free practice one, I was 24. And then, uh, but just to improve half a second, and there was eight. So you know, it was like so many people in the in such a in such a, a, a small gap, you know. And uh, in in EWC is different because uh, you basically have to to do for twenty four hours. We we push for twenty four hours like. Uh, very very fast it's not like we we keep something in the pocket we always push because if you want to win against people like Guintoli or Di Meglio they are all all fast and you need to push all the time but uh, you don't have most of the time this uh, fight like uh, fairing you're against not on, fairing yeah, you're, not, you're not together yeah. you know yeah. you're fighting against the lap time and the pace and uh, is your pit board you know every time that you want to see the gap that is improving from from the guy behind or closing from the guy in front and this is is strange because you you feel uh, even more alone in a 20 laps race uh, you don't feel alone because you have all the people all around you you know yeah, and if, yeah. if if you shut the throttle off for two tenths two people pass you and uh, so it's, it's like different like have you ever done british bsb racing before you came and joined mccams no, never, N- never. Did were you aware of BSP? Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, I did- knew. I heard so many stories, <laughs> many riders that came here and uh, see G- Guintoli after the first race in uh, in uh, that I did uh, two weeks ago in Donington. He brought me uh, BSB is brutal. Yeah, it's, 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 it's correct. You <laughs> are know, you, are it, you friends with Claudio Corti? Yes, well, yeah, yes, yes, yes Claudio. I spoke, yeah, yeah, I spoke yeah. with Claudio. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. I think it was an eye opener for Claudio as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like fuck, you know. But, it, but he did live in Sheffield as well, so that's an eye opener. <laughs> 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 yeah. Amen. <laughs> no, but it's like you know when you talk about expectation against reality. Yes, was that? Wait. It was very, very close. Even 
more than what I expected. I was because, wondering, yeah. You know, I went also to North America. I went, is, uh, you cannot say, also, I believe that uh, if some of the top riders here come to the Italian Championship and there is Piero, there is this Del Bianco, there is some good riders, it's difficult for them to immediately to win because when you race in a national championship that is in America, in, uh, in UK or in Italy, you have to think about that there is some, there are some riders that uh, for 10 years they are racing in the circuit with this kind of bike, with these tires, with no traction control for traction control and wheel control, for example, in BSB. So they really, they are really special of this track. They are really special of this bike. They are really special. They, they really understand the in deep what, what does it mean to ride this bike at the limit. And the uh, same when you go in Moto America, there is these Dunlop tires that are very different from any Dunlop tire that I ever rode before. Didn't like that much, but uh, you see that they really, Cameron Bobier or Jay Gagne, they, they, they are really, really fast. Yeah. Then maybe they come to World Superbike and they struggle, you know? Yeah. Because there is a different spec of bike, different electronic, different tires, and this uh, is different. And uh, in every national championship, there is a specialist that is incredibly fast. In BSB, there is 20 specialists yeah, that are yeah, incredibly yeah. fast. So that that, that <laughs> makes the things much more difficult. <laughs> go on, Joe, go on. But, yeah, have you found it hard to go from your yacht bike, which is, correct me if I'm wrong, but all but damn it, very similar to a World Superbike spec mm -hmm. with the electronics and everything that's on it mm -hmm. to then come across to riding a BSB where there's no rider aids is that a big eye opener for you or because even with your videos that you do for, for YouTube which are mega if people haven't checked them out you, <laughs> thank you, you. your pages are mega, and I use them for onboards for just picking stuff up so I'm never going to be anywhere near you mate you're never, gonna, you're never going to get any more information now he's going to no. start oh, and, um, oh good dad and, uh, is your team ready? No, no. It's, 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 it's me mum and I'm going to get my head kicked in if I don't have that again. It's so. um, my girlfriend complaining. Get her here. <laughs> There's a serious red flag if I have your girlfriend. So yes. I'm, like, <laughs> I'm just putting that out there. I'm just letting you know. Um, Anywho. Well, oh, yeah. So, so then to, to come and ride here with this, it's completely different to even the, the bikes that you use for your videos. This is different, isn't it? Well, I, yes, it's different. Uh, every bike is different. Uh, to be honest, this uh, Mechamps bike is very, very similar to the World Superbike. Right? Yes, because the engine spec, the chassis, the, 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 the triple clamp, uh, the swing arm, the link, uh, they are all same as the, the, let's say the chassis part uh, is same as the Superbike. Uh, engine, the character of the engine is much more different and the way how they set up the bike is much more different because with no electronics you have to i came for example to donington with the setting of top rack i know the setting i look at the data i look at the gears and everything because i say okay maybe this can help me to go fast immediately in uh, in donington no? you, you, that's incredible how you can just get top racks data is that just <laughs> yeah. a yamaha yeah, of like... course this is my job he's, when developed, I have he's developed it for top rack <laughs> that's, that's, that's interesting though you know yeah. what i mean imagine just ringing up top rack going hello son you know how, how many clicks are rebound <laughs> <laughs> I took. The, I look. Uh, I, I was. Incredible. The race before. I don't remember. We were in Aragon or something. In Aragon, your your hometown. Yeah, you know? my hometown. Yeah. <laughs> that will stick. That will, yes. that will stick. You have a time. <laughs> and uh, and I look at the data and say, okay, I I studied a bit, you know, to to arrive in Donington ready. But then I came here and I realized that the way out, you even if the bike is very similar and you ride on Pirelli, he, yeah, the, the guys here ride in a different way because. Uh, with no traction control, the engine character, they did an amazing job in my camps because it's so smooth, so nice to ride, but is uh, very far from the aggressiveness of the superbike engine. And uh, with no traction control, you have to have more corner speed, more like a 600 style, let's say. And uh, with the superbike, instead, is more stop and go, especially with top rack riding style that uh, he has the bike yeah. uh, like uh, like for braking and really stop the bike into the middle of the corner and then pick up and goes. This you don't see so much in uh, in BSB. If the brake is more smooth and uh, is more corner speed. And so I understood that in uh, in Donington, but uh, at the beginning was quite shocking. Say, OK, the, the bike is same, but at the beginning in, a, in a different way. Yeah, so yeah. and this was uh, tough. The, the EWC bike is much more different because uh, we have uh, uh, Bridgestone tires, first of all. And this requ requires a completely different development from chassis point of view, swing arm, linkage, uh, triple clamp, everything. So we use everything different. The electronic is the same as the super bike. So this helps because it's a good uh, safety help, let's say. 
uh, but the the chassis is very very dif different and the way how you ride the bike is again different so they are all called the Yamaha R1 but uh, is three way of uh, riding the R1 in completely three different three different ways how long with your experience and everything that you've done in your career how long how many years or even if years would it take you to be in the top five at British yeah well in the championship or in one race because oh, well, I'm, pretty, what, no, I'm pretty sure that in one race uh, we're going to race tomorrow by I, the way listeners yeah. <laughs> <laughs> be careful what you I, say yeah, next I know I know in in, uh, in one race uh, I'm pretty sure that uh, doing if I do one full season uh, we, with, with such a great bike and a great team like McCamps it's possible to do such a good result to, to stay in the top 5 in, in some friendly tracks but to be top 5 in the championship this is completely different level because yeah, yeah. Uh, there is some tracks that are very very tough very difficult and uh, i have to be honest huge respect from all the riders in bsb because they are so fast and so the, the level is so high that really you, you cannot afford to 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 do one mistake in one corner because three people are going to pass you so is is really 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 nice how to, many to be. how many of the uk tracks have you done oh yeah uh, done silverstone donington brands edge uh i think that's that, it. that any you want to do like like really want to like you know when you see one no, that's a no i, I can I, hear I, it I, I, <laughs> not really <laughs> does that mean we're not going to see you next year no, I, 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 Steve, I don't want to go to Cadwell. Cadwell, yeah. no 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 alton no, no mate i, I don't I, no i i <laughs> I don't want. Bikes I'm happy are supposed with... to jump. Yeah. Yeah, bikes. <laughs> yes. Well, funny enough, um, room, uh, well, exclusive, Steve Rogers is <laughs> re-coming out of retirement and he's going to sign you next year, so you're going to have to start learning. Straight as, a, as a coach, I can accept the, the job, but not, not, not as a rider. No, I have, I, I have to be honest. You have to be, a, um, you have to be honest no, with yourself and uh, understand your, your potential. And uh, at my age, I'm 35, I don't feel like I'm ready to start all over again to learn uh, learning process of all these tracks and uh, it's, it's tough and the level of uh, of the riders is so high that is uh, is is too difficult for, i think for me to to finish in the top five in the championship but uh, it's amazing for me to be here because uh, to race in such a great team with a uh, bike that uh, that i love and the uh, track this brands that i in 2006 and seven year uh, one in 2007 and uh, I, I remember like one of my favorite track in the in the world you now with Laguna Seca, Imola. I like this kind of track that is up and down. Yeah, and uh, yeah. to be here today, I was smiling uh, so much because I was in the wet this morning. I said, wow, that, that's amazing. It was my first time here on the wet. But so it's always nice to ride in, uh, in, the, in this kind of tracks. It's, it's exciting. And like, um, I'm too busy doing my own little thing. So how did you get on in Superbikes today? I was uh, 10th on the, on the full wet. So it was pretty good in the first, in FP1. And um, in the, in the dry, pretty, yeah, pretty, yeah. Right. <laughs> no, it was yeah, <laughs> but sounds, I mean, that's bloody brilliant. What are you on about? <laughs> yeah, I was, I was happy. I say, yeah, I, I can say I was I can happy. Just see it this is shit. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> I'm riding shit. <laughs> I, it was much more challenging this afternoon because it was uh, the track was uh, half was dry and uh, the other half, the parts on, in the woods there was uh, really there was some wet patches, but. Normally, uh, I I would say if I didn't see the other guys riding, I would have gone three seconds three, or four seconds even slower. But I see them and I say, okay, for them it's not wet or I don't know. It's like for them it was not wet. So I say, okay, I have to push. Have to, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was so difficult because it, there was a couple of corners where the line, dry line was literally the sides of the tire. So you, you couldn't go like like this off the line because you would crash. So there were many crashes this afternoon as well, and so and it was very very difficult. I didn't felt really com confident to that uh, breaking and entering to the this corner. I would I will be in that narrow line, you know. So I was I was a bit uh, was a bit challenging for me this afternoon, and uh, I hope tomorrow it hopefully will be awful dry, awful wet, yeah, and yeah. Uh, and uh, I can do some experience because you know when you don't know the track, you're not familiar with the track and the bike. Uh, to be so precise on the riding is very, very difficult. I tell you, what's going to be interesting tomorrow is we've had a very, well, <laughs> very, very un English weather this year. It's been quite warm from, like, from the word go, you know, and riding in cold conditions. But you lads, you two, with the world endurance, you know, you know how to handle cold conditions. And like tomorrow is not looking, <laughs> it's looking dry, 
but it's looking a bit fresher. So let's hope that plays in your hands. Yeah, yeah, we, we have to see that. But uh, I remember <laughs> I'm picking, in, I'm picking him up some you, big you did Le Mans. Yeah, Le Mans was uh, was unbelievable. It was I, like I, in I the didn't night, do it, but I was commentating on uh, it. Yeah, the people were crashing oh. be- behind the safety car because the it was so cold. Th- three degrees on the, during the night. So oh it was my like God. you guys were coming in and couldn't feel your hands. Yeah, yeah, it was, uh, yeah. yeah. And uh, I was mm-hmm. uh, pretty good in that race because. Uh, I understood that the only way to go fast was to straight after the of the box was the garage was to push at 100% because if you don't put the heat on the tire and you start going slow you crash. So you I really had to push at 100% from the first corner and this you, you, for your brain is not not the correct way but at the end it was the correct way and I and I was able to to go really fast but I saw some riders that were not pushing so much and they were crashing like stupid crashes because uh, there was they no couldn't heat. generate any hit on the on the tire. Yeah. Do you know what surprised me? So I've had a couple of years away from EWC and was the fourth rider at Baldor for the Metis team on that experimental bike. Nice. And we did the Tuesday test. You and Hanukkah came past me. <laughs> one on the left and like, one on the right. No, you yeah. both up the inside to be fair. <laughs> but what I'd forgotten was how crazy the French guys are straight out of the box. Yeah. They're like qualifying, pe- they, they don't do an outlap, yeah. do they? There is yes. no thing as an outlap, it's just bands out. Yes, because you have to consider in 24 hours, this we work a lot on that, yeah. is uh, the, the time is keep running. So yeah. if you lose time uh, going into the pit lane or going out of the pit lane, it's easy to lose three, four seconds. Yeah. To gain a three, four seconds when you're at your pace, at your maximum, is much more difficult one tenth at a time, no? Yeah. But to lose four seconds in the auto lap is super easy if you don't get the confidence immediately with the new tire. And uh, so is is really, this is very, very important. And this GMT 94, they, they told me everything about endurance in the beginning because I didn't know anything, nothing. The, the, all the strategies that there is behind, the, the, the time that, for example, a rider that go one tenth a lap slower for the 24 hours means that uh, is uh, at the end of the of the races you get more than one lap behind you know yeah, yeah. you do y- your bike is a uh, worse fuel consumption and you do uh, one lap less than the, your competitor means that at the end of the race you will do one more stop one more stop means one minute and a half uh, a so lap. so so basically, you start the race already. If you do one lap less than the others, you already know that uh, you have a gap from the from this guy of one minute and a half. So you have to catch him riding, and it's not easy one minute and a half riding, yeah. you know. So there is all this uh, because everything in twenty four hours is huge. You know, if you think about one tenth is nothing, but in twenty four hours is big. One pit stop is is not much, but in in twenty four hours, is, one lap is not much, but it's one pit stop at the end of the race. So it's a lot. The, and this is, uh, the only thing that goes with that. Is that anything can happen? Yeah, anything like can happen. Like that Ducati yes. last year at yeah. Baldor. The yes. Ducati like led for, well, they were leading with 40 minutes to go, weren't they? They were yeah. 23 hours and 10 minutes into, or 20 minutes into the race. They had like 40 minutes left and the clutch shit itself, yeah. didn't they? Yeah, yeah. And they, they, they finished fourth, did they? I don't know. Yeah, fourth. Yeah, they, they, they lost the podium. Yeah, yeah. Podium. at the end they were not. But they'd, le- they'd led the race for. And they didn't leave from the word go, but you guys is, you it, had is it worth years. is it worth knacking it at the beginning <clears throat> of the race or, or like, knacking it at the end? Like uh, that? To be honest, for me, it's better if if I always say if the engine have to blow up, it's better that this happen in the in in the first ten minutes, first and then at the end I, I don't do twenty three hours and yeah. I'm destroyed and, and, the, the, and then the factory BMW uh, super stock bike did. Did it do four corners? Never. Or one? Oh, no, that did one lap. The Wojcik Superbike didn't do a lap. Oh, wow. <laughs> Baldor didn't do now one that's, lap. Now that's, that's a lot of money spent for half a lap. The, Met- the Metis did 22 hours and then did a rod. Yeah, this oh, is my bad. God. That's, and that's the, the other side. Then it's not just the riders. You see the team. Oh, you think, yes. oh, my God. You know. I'll, I'll, I'll have to go watch what I really do. But by the way, I'm not you being... You have to come, yeah. I'd have to. I definitely have to come. I'm sorry, I'm sorry for being rude. I'm looking for the Patreon question. So we have like okay. some fantastic... Without the patrons, this show wouldn't exist, but it gives them an opportunity to ask questions. But I've got a fantastic one here from CJ. What has been your absolute favorite race bike and on what which favorite track? Favorite track, let's say uh, Laguna Seca, maybe. And favorite bike, 
the bike that I love the most uh, maybe is really the Yard Air One because it's a bike that is so easy to ride and uh, at the end we won a race with that, we won the championship this year so it's, uh, it's really a bike that uh, you jump on it and you can immediately be fast mm. and this is, is so smooth, so nice and uh, I, lo- I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I've got it wasn't going to say Kawasaki, was it? <laughs> <laughs> I've got one for you from, uh, actually from one of my best mates, Ty. He said, he's from Aragon any, as well. He's from Aragon. <laughs> he's not. He's a bit further south. Um, he said, have you got any pre-race rituals? Oh, I like, oh, Ty, that's a good question. Mm, to be honest... Uh, She's locked no. up in the hotel. Yeah, I was going to say, they're, <laughs> they're involved in mixes. Damn it, you beat me to it. N- uh, not really rituals, but uh, I like to do the things in the same way, you know, every every day. when uh, So I have uh, like uh, a routine of things that I do and uh, I always follow the uh, the same plan. But this helps me to get the concentration to be to be focused when, uh, when I'm on the bike. But... Uh, I, I know many riders and uh, I, the, the problem with the age is if at the beginning, uh, so, so 10 years ago I was doing one thing, then I added another one and it was two. Because it worked. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then it was three and then it was four. Then you start having 10 or 15 procedure to do that. Uh, okay, I have to do this, 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 this. I, st- I should start writing because do you, <laughs> it's too do many you, things. Do you have like anything that you do where you... I have to put my left boot on, then my right boot, and then I have to do my left glove, my right glove. Yeah, so when it's not I, even when like I, a ritual. Yeah, like yeah, you yeah. You just have yeah, your routine. This is, yeah, exactly. This is a routine. This is what I'm talking about. Yeah. But before it was just maybe the 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 left glove first and the right glove after. Then start the boot. Then start out the way <laughs> you put <laughs> it. Yeah, 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 and yeah. then yeah. become a mess. Yes. We had um we had a a, a voice question yes yes um, so i will pull that up i will pull that up carry on, carry on talk sorry i'll i will no, find that I think, straight it's away. A, I think it's a really good question that right. actually is uh, well i haven't yeah. even heard this but this you'll, is you, good, will, good. you will hear this hold on that's technology come on Te- is it coming through the blue <laughs> is it on the bluetooth do you want me to play it uh i just oh sorry <laughs> this will I go if we could get your opinion on uh, moto e uh, and whether you think that that is a, a sustainable answer um to bike racing um with the climate issues in consideration or if you think maybe alternate fuels is a better solution um thanks as always to joe and dom and uh, grace and um, thank you I think that's, yeah, well, a, that's this, an awesome question. Yeah, this is a nice question, and also I forgot to say I race in Moto right, Moto right. E for a couple yeah. of years as well. So <laughs> yeah, just to add, just, just to add in. some more <laughs> confusion, in my, because t- t- two years ago I was uh, testing the Superbike on Pirelli, racing in Moto E with Michelin, racing in the Italian Championship with Dunlop, and EWC with Bridgestone. So was a bit confusing for me two years ago <laughs> at the second better slow down because like this I cannot switch bike and tires every every weekend because at the end you cannot perform at 100% and so being counterproductive yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. at the end at the end you cannot give your best uh, like if somebody ride only download at the end uh, it's going to be better than you for sure then last week was mission two weeks ago <laughs> so not, not possible anyway Moto E Moto E is uh I don't know if if it's really the future to be honest because uh, first of all we are racing to promote uh, let's say the 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 bikes that the people are, are gonna buy no the, yeah. the, the the people that love motorcycle buy and they use i don't think many people are interested in buying a, in an electric uh, electric bike because wh- why you buy a bike or or you to go on the track and go faster and uh, you cannot wait uh, five hours you do one session and wait five hours that the thing is recharging so it's not gonna work they or, have no soul though do they yeah, yeah exactly or you sorry uh, well, you're right though you're, you're right know, yeah. <laughs> or you, you you buy a bike like uh let's say a, a, a touring bike to do kilometers to go to like uh, like with your with well, your wife to do to to in the years and and it's, it's, it's like having a girlfriend and taking all the fun stuff off her yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly just a, no? just a body <laughs> <laughs> just uh, yes, yeah. nothing. Yeah. Not, no fun stuff. <laughs> and are, they, are, are they characterless? Are they like just soulless? Wait, wait, wait. That's sorry, not sorry. <laughs> and basically, you cannot do the touring. You cannot do the the, the racing because obviously you cannot do like uh, when, when you go on a on a day and a track day. You do five or six sessions a day. Like this, you have to do two or three because the thing has to recharge, so it's not possible. So I don't see really a great future in that. And uh, they are heavier, 
the, the battle doesn't last as long uh, as uh, you want because the, the races are seven, eight, nine laps. For me, it's not long enough, especially coming from 24 hours. Then the week after, I'm in seven laps a race, <laughs> so it was, it was tough. I, I was talking to Luca Vitale, yes. and he said that he got invited to do one. He turned it down mm-hmm. because... You love you a name drop, get... by the way. Just no, because that. he's Italian, <laughs> and you'll know, you'll know him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, and it, he said... You only do one practice session and one race. Yeah, yeah. You, you do a couple of practice session, the the qualifying and the and the. But they're really short sessions. Really short session. Like you do nine and well, No, yes, but he yeah. just said it's it's, it's, it's super, almost no point yeah. in going and giving the time. So at the end is uh, is nice because they're trying to do something for to make the motorcycle green to give a nice message. Michelin is doing these uh, recycled tires, uh, for, not recycled tires, but tires made from recycled material. So yeah. is a uh, is the the kind of idea is nice and until the mm, let's say the technology will allow us to have a motorcycle that can make uh, uh, three four hundred kilometers uh, if you want to do some touring or uh, a normal track day uh, with five six session i i don't see it as something that the people are gonna buy for themselves and uh, and and to enjoy the motorcycle mm. as we as we know it now what is really interesting for me is that, for example, in uh, in Japan Superbike, they are racing with the with the um, with the fuel with the alternative fuel that is bio, uh, bio yeah, fuel yeah. that is, uh, and apparently is working really well. From in World Superbike next year will be forty percent uh, bio fuel if I right. understood well. Yeah, it should be like that. And uh, next year in two years, so anyway, should, probably next year already. Hmm. So this is interesting. We are going in that direction that for me is much more clever and much more, they give us the opportunity to keep uh, dreaming about this motorcycle that we know now for the future because we, we can use the, the biofuel we can uh, and, and we can use the, the bikes how we love them that have to make noise, have, have to have horsepower and we can make uh, also uh, a normal day on a track and, uh, and enjoy with the friends. This is, this is what it's all about, I think. I like the answer. Good that answer. was fun. That was actually too clean of an answer. I love it. That was very. That was, I'm, I'm voting you for prime. Yeah, it was a, very diplomatic. I, I, I can say I had, the, I had the fun also with the Moto E, but uh, uh, if, of course, if you ask me to choose, I, I will not not hesitate. Uh, one one tenth of a second internal combustion <laughs> engine yeah, yeah, yeah of course yeah. it's normal yeah. now we i tell you what you hit the nail on the head joe though that like it's the soul of it isn't it you're, you're sitting on there it's just yeah i, I totally agree there, with that there was a clip there. wasn't there that was doing the rounds on instagram or something of a little kid oh, at, the, the... At, at, at silverstone i think it was and all the at motor gp and all the bike it might even have been a bsb and all the bikes come past and he's like yeah, yeah, absolutely buzzing and I'm, you wouldn't get that with an electric bike because he'd no. just go <laughs> yeah it's probably noise, what, uh, it's what, the... what i can say the only way probably we are now getting older now we're no more the the young generation maybe a kid that uh, grew up now that born now no in uh, and in 12 or 13 years you want to race motorcycle maybe uh, he, he, he will not like all this noise. He will not like all this smell and everything. Oh, he would God. prefer something I like. I uh, think that's the caveman in us. Yeah. I think like the, yeah. it's, it's like you are from Aragon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I do not think it's, it's what's built into us. It's, I, I hope it, I, this yeah. is not going to happen. Yeah. But we have also to accept that the the world is changing in yeah. in a lot and quickly for for this point of view. So maybe the yeah. new generation will be more sensible, sensitive to to the green and to the noise pollution and all this stuff and. Uh, Probably we 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 are not, and uh, mm. but but maybe the the world we go in this direction, and the the actually the the kids w- will want to, to yeah. will prefer to ride with a Moto E than a, than a the no, look or something. I what don't are know, these but... idiots doing <laughs> racing with flammable thing wrapped between their legs? <laughs> idiots. <Yeah. laughs> exactly, exactly. You know, <laughs> like like us lot tomorrow. But I tell you, I must go on, and I, I want to make a bet with you. I really want to make a bet with you. What, what's what's your top result tomorrow? Top I, want feel, to... I, I, I want to feel the vibe here on the McCams Raceway Yamaha. Oh, come on, give me a. I, I am, we can edit this out if it I'm goes wrong. I'm not happy. I, to be honest, I'm not happy about today because I I was just hoping in Donington or in here to have a weekend with the same condition in every session. Because in Donington, I was starting from FP1 16, then 14, then 7 in qualifying. And I saw a progression. No? I was adapting. Yeah, yeah. And I say, OK, if now we do a race, probably I, f- I finish in top 10. And tomorrow I, I, I can try to be one result in top five, like I promised you. But uh, this didn't happen because, you know, the conditions in Donington mm-hmm. were changing. And here is the same today. We lost. I, at the end, I can say that today was not really helping for me because you know i don't come in this track from 2007 
I need to adapt a bit to the bike and this morning was wet. Then uh, after was mixed conditions, so it was very, very difficult for me. I hope tomorrow I wake up and immediately get the feeling, uh, the feeling on the bike, and I, and I can do, and I can do. I want to finish in top ten all three races. This is my target. I don't want to stay out of uh, out of top ten. I will that be angry. That's that's top, <laughs> top, top yes. ten in top all three ten. races. Yeah. Yeah. Do you, like you know, I, I, I'm going to end up going down a little bit of a rabbit hole here. And I don't mean to, but do you, you know how analytical you are? I can hear it. Like you can you can pick things out that other riders can't. Like, can you just have you ever been angry on a bike? No, you don't seem like that. No, 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 you don't want to see this side. You know, top 10 tomorrow and you just go, you know what? You're fucking getting it. You know what I mean? Do you, yeah. ever, do you, ever, do you no, ever like that? I, sometimes that's too much. Don't don't forget oh. I'm Italian. And, uh, yeah, so, and, so, no, no, no. I, I try to be calm. There's the camera here. So it's nice and uh, forget smiling. About and, uh, <laughs> but uh, no, sometimes I, I, I have to work a lot on this side during the years because sometimes it was really going to the rev limit very quickly you know, class then uh, with the age uh, you, you improve that no i really um, hope you just pull the pin tomorrow I'm, <laughs> I, am, I, am, I am praying for it you know turn one you'll see me with my binoculars <laughs> go on <laughs> smashing the tank <laughs> steve from raceway is going uh-oh <laughs> like this is not gonna go well but <laughs> have we got any more questions joe before housekeeping i think we, I think we covered everything I've, in the uh, hey. hour in our discussions in our chats yeah, I think it's been a, a mega one that one it's been absolutely fantastic so thank you so much to our patrons CJ Kai, like Sam Jess David Young Andy Jason Tony and everyone else but mind you William Boyd's definitely got the question of the pod so he did say how did you pull your missus I remember <laughs> I, no 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 no, it gets better so you know how I mentioned Chrissy who started this podcast he goes I remember Chrissy once mentioning her in an episode and I'm talking <laughs> like we me and Chrissy did 170 I think, episodes. And I think you, that. you, me and Chrissy talked about Wait, that no. she's a very attractive lady. <laughs> Chris, Chrissy literally <laughs> just went, literally Chrissy on an episode, sat down with the lads went, have you seen his missus? And those three just went, wow <laughs> so from one blow to another well done thank you very much <laughs> this was a great achievement to be honest because <laughs> I <laughs> when when uh, I was with my ex this this uh, is, is funny as well my friends say mate you have to keep keep her close because this is not gonna happen that you find a better girl than this and then okay we had the wedding divorce and everything and, and then I show up with her that is I think uh, uh, 10 times better <laughs> And my friends say, okay, uh, 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 this is even possible, you know. <laughs> and, oh <my> <laughs> I hope your ex-wife is watching this. <laughs> I hope she is. Yeah, me too. Yeah. I will send her the link from a I'll fake profile. <laughs> <laughs> we've got to finish it there you know, I was about to say like, you know we've got we've got Bennett's on board we've got like so much housekeeping but that is the perfect way to finish this honestly thank you so so much for your time and um, I'll be watching turn one and I hope you just give it the absolute nuts and it's going to be crazy you know what I mean pull the pin young'un okay. pull the pin and um, Joe thank you very much yeah no thank you thanks for uh, yeah it's been a good crack thank there. you we thank have... you so much to you Is uh, the podcast is really amazing I enjoy a lot of spending the time with you so I hope maybe in the future I will, I will come back he's, he's saying that now but when we hit stop he's going to run out that door <laughs> down here there you are. but yet again thank you so much and we'll catch you all later on see you in a bit